and hopefully then you'll not miss too much contact time. So ladies and gentlemen, we've just been through the inflation question that you did for homework. Um, and uh, if you want to know a little bit more about that, you can send me a message on this learning. Otherwise, you'll be able to find the mark scheme actually for that paper online. Um, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, and I address this to your colleagues here in front of me. So today we're looking at inflation. And so today we're going to consider the main causes of inflation in the first instance. And that really is what this main feature, this sort of showpiece feature, is going to be about today. So without further ado, students in front of me, uh, let's get a new page in our exercise books. Today is the 12th of October. It's a new day. It's a new dawn. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. You may, of course, that's uh, Douglas there. He's just uh, sorting himself out with some stationery, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we've so far considered, and I've just we've had a little brief sort of Q and A about this in the class. We, so we've talked about inflation, the definition. We've talked about the symmetrical target. We've talked about why it was uh, the Bank of England was granted independence in uh, 1997 by Tony Blair's government at the time. And now we're going to move on, and we're going to think about the different causes of inflation. Okay, so in your exercise books, ladies and gentlemen, that's the heading for today. We're going to be looking at the causes of inflation. And those causes, ladies and gentlemen, there are... If you are lucky enough to study uh, economics in the sixth form, we'll be looking at three main causes. But for us today... We'll just stick to two main ones. And those are, number one, we're going to be thinking about demand pull inflation. And the second, which is referred to as cost push inflation. So it's demand pull and cost push. And those are the two main causes that we're going to be thinking about this morning. So, um, Chris, well, what do you think is it that's driving inflation when we talk about demand pull inflation? He said the demand for the good or service. And do you think, to what extent would there be demand, which would be driving up prices? Do you think there'd be lots of demand? Or do you think that there would be just a little bit of demand? What, what is it? Demand pool. Very good. So lots and lots of demand. And specifically, lots and lots of demand chasing too few goods as well. So if you can imagine, ladies and gentlemen, um, did anyone uh, on their lockdown, did anybody watch Homes Under the Hammer? Which is a, a, a firm favourite of people maybe of my generation. You, Han, did you watch that? Homes Under the Hammer, Webster? No, don't, don't be courageous, okay? Be courageous just because this is going out to the worldwide audience. Uh, be courageous here. Sam? You've watched it before, and can you just explain the general premise, please? Okay, so there's a house for sale, and let's imagine that this is the auction room, and you all are interested in purchasing this particular house. So, will anyone start the bidding at 100,000? Webster says yes. Okay, will anybody give me 110? 120? 30, 50, 150, Amy at the back, 50, Evan, he's raising his paddle, ladies and gentlemen, like he's at a proper auction, <laughs> okay, 150, yes, 60, do I see 60, do I see 60 in the room, 60, yes, 70, anyone give me 70 for it, 70, one house, it's with Mr. Bullock here, 70, going once, Going twice, sold. Well done. Okay, now, 
How many houses do they have to sell there, Ethan? One. And how many people were demanding it, Ethan? About, about three, given the numbers in the class at the moment. No, about, about 15 of you, okay? So there's a lot of demand, but there's not much supply. And as a consequence of that, that really drives the price upwards. Too much demand. Um, what we would say, and how we would maybe explain it, we would say there's too much demand chasing too few goods. So particularly when the goods are scarce, that will drive up the price. Do you understand that? Okay, so let's just concentrate for the moment then on this demand pool aspect. So we're talking about excessive demand or another way we might explain this, we might say that there's too much demand chasing too few goods. Okay. So I'll give you one example there of an auction, which is, is a great example, actually, of just a situation in which there is not enough of the particular good. And therefore, price is rising all the time because price, as we know from our studies of micro, way, way back at the beginning of year 10, price acts as a what for consumers? What type of device is price? Because not everybody can afford things as they get more and more expensive. So price, what does it do, you hand to goods and services? It will do, and because the price is increasing, can everybody afford it? No, so what is price doing to that good? Happens in war time. Very good, Amy, it rations. So the rising price is rationing the good, okay? The rising price rations the good or the service. So if I said to you then, we would, in most circumstances here, we would probably like to draw a little diagram to illustrate this. As we know in economics, diagrams, part of your analysis, really, really important to include a diagram in an answer. So, Evan, what, have you any idea, sort of diagram we would draw here, given that it's demand pool inflation? Any idea what curve we might be shifting? Absolutely, right. So we'd be shifting the demand curve. But we, remember, are we in the micro side of the course or the macro side, Elliot? Thank you. We're in the macro side. So when we're drawing our diagram, James, when we're drawing our diagram, we need to make sure that it is a macro diagram that we're actually drawing. So... With that in mind, what are the labels on the axis for macro? I'm just going to very quickly remind you, if it was micro, we would have price and quantity demanded and quantity supplied. What would it be, if, given that it's macro? Come on, we, we, we've already done this. Thank you, Thomas. Very good. So... Thomas said AD rather than just D, so it's, and do you know, remember what A stands for? Aggregate, the demand in the whole economy, the aggregate demand, the sum total of demand in the economy. Can you see that okay? And then AS, what does AS stand for? Thomas? Aggregate supply, correct. So we've got our aggregate <coughs> supply and our aggregate demand okay Jake what goes on the y-axis if it's micro we would just be talking price but we're macro say that again 
Uh, okay, I see where I see where you're coming from there. So AP, uh, the aggregate, it's a sort of that, but it's not. That's not the label that we would uh, would use, Neve. Nathan, can't be relying on a learned colleague here for all these answers. Although it looks like we'll have to. Very good. Have you been revising? Excellent. Price level. So it's the price level, not just the price, the price level. Now that is our macro label. And what about our final one, the x-axis? What goes along the x-axis? Real output. And that is not Q, that is Y. Okay? So there's a Y label. Very, very important that you remember to differentiate and distinguish your micro, micro labels from macro and vice versa. Okay. Mr. Cresswell, what's that called? Yeah, it's no different to your micro, so we're still talking about an equilibrium position here. So this is equilibrium position A, so this is P1 and Y1. And then in order to show the inflationary effect caused by too much demand, Jake, what will we need to do? Exactly, thank you. So we need to move from AD1, as I've just added the little one there. We need to shift from AD1 to the right, AD2, P2 and Y2. And of course, very important on your diagrams, make sure that you include the direction of travel. That away and that away. And moving along our aggregate supply curve. So we've had an increase in the price level. And what has caused that increase in the price level? Ethan? Nope. An increase in demand. It's the aggregate demand shifting is the cause, the effect is the increase in the price level or the increase in the real output. Are you okay, uh, Elliot? You're just joking? Okay, this gentleman got an emergency, uh, but I think, yeah, have a drink. Okay, stop staring at him, please, you know, come on. So, Ethan, what caused the rise in the price and the increase in the real output? Increase in aggregate demand, right? So we've got rising AD causes. What does the rising AD cause you, Han, in terms of price? An increase in the price level. And another word for price level would be, Joe, inflation, correct. So this is this is our this is in effect our demand pool inflation. Okay, that's fairly straightforward. So demand pool inflation, just shifting the demand curve to the right. Now, if you're shifting the demand curve to the right. And that causes inflation. What would you do, Hannah? Hannah, what would you do if you were Andrew Bailey? Who's Andrew Bailey? Speak up, please. The governor of the Bank of England. Let me just close this door. Very good. So if you were Andrew Bailey, who's the governor of the Bank of England, 
And you're trying to keep inflation at what target, please, Hannah? 2%, excellent. So, Andrew Bailey, 2%. What would you want to demand? What would you want to do to, to demand in order to bring inflation back under control? So too much demand has pushed inflation up. So what would you want to do to bring it back? Right, I th I'm not sure if you've got quite got my question. If too much demand forces the price up, causes inflation, and you're Andrew Bailey, and you want to bring inflation back, then what do you need to do? Yeah, I mean, what you're saying is right, but you're saying the effect, not the cause. So I'm saying, you're saying, well, Andrew Bailey will want prices to fall, to come back down again. But I'm saying to you, well, how will you do that? If you've gone from A to B, what's the, what's the remedy to bring it back to A? If we're looking at demand pool inflation, yeah? If too much demand has caused it, and you want to bring it back, what we need to do to aggregate demand? It's not a trick question. Jake. Exactly. You'll need to shift the demand curve back that way, wouldn't you? And that will bring inflation back. Yes? Okay. So in order to control inflation, if it's caused by demand, you'll need to do what to demand, Neve. If demand causes your inflation, how are you going to bring it back? Exactly. Reduce the level of aggregate demand. Correct. Okay. So in your uh, in your notes somewhere, what what you need, to, what you also need to be thinking about here is that. In order to control this inflation, uh, Andrew Bailey and his colleagues in the Monetary Policy Committee, remember? Johan, how many members are there in the Monetary Policy Committee? The MPC? Nine. Very good, nine. How many women are currently on the MPC? One. One. So Andrew Bailey... He might think to himself, right, we've got inflation, it's caused by demand, we need to reduce demand. Okay. So to control DP, right, demand pull inflation, Andrew Bailey's going to want to reduce AD. Now, what instrument does he use to reduce that aggregate demand? What's his instrument? CPI measures inflation, but it's not what he would use to control inflation. The base rate, thank you. So he's going to reduce, <coughs> excuse me, he's going to reduce aggregate demand by using the instrument at his disposal. I mean, there are others, but we'll just focus on the industry at the moment. So he's going to re reduce AD, and he's going to use the base rate, as Sam Tong quite rightly says. And Sam, what is the current base rate? Very good, 0.1%. 0 0.1%. See that? Put Sam in front of a worldwide audience, and he's on top form. 0.1%. Okay, and here's the, you know, the, the million dollar question, the million pound question. In order to, to bring demand down, will the interest rate have to go up or will it have to go downwards? Hands up for up. So let's see them. Hands up for up. Hands up for down. Okay. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a majority vote in favour of up. Up is the correct answer. So put your hands up again, those of you who said up. Okay. Now, um, Thomas, can you explain why up is... Why, why will that bring demand downwards?
that's the effect, but I want to know how that happens. Why will increasing the base rate bring demand downwards? What, what might people do when the interest rate goes up if they've got some, some money spare? Save, right. So therefore they're not demanding things, are they? Right, so that's going to reduce demand. Tell me another way in which you had, you had your hand up for increase the base rate. Tell me another way in which rising uh, interest rates will bring demand downwards. Think about people's mortgage repayments. If the interest rate goes up, what happens to the amount that people repay on their mortgage? Um, they, pay they pay more on the loan. Therefore, what happens to the amount of money they have to buy on other nice things that they might like? They'll have less. Okay, now what's the special term about less something income? Um, and you might put it in the bin. Less income. Very good, Webster. Less disposable income, and nice to be helped out by a colleague, right? Less disposable income, and therefore what happens to the amount that they can buy in the shops? It, it's less, so demand will decrease. decrease, correct. Okay, so to reduce AD using the base rate, Andrew Bailey and his colleagues, they would say, let's increase R, okay, R is the base rate. And why will that work? Well, we've just had one or two examples. So uh, Thomas said people will save more. So if they're, not, if they're saving, what are they not doing, James? Spending, Spending demanding, buying. Okay. Johan... Thank you. Increase mortgage. Now that would be, uh, Johan, we must obviously qualify that because we would say that's for people who are on a variable rate mortgage. Unlike me, I'm on a fixed rate, so I know my monthly payment will not change every month. So, But anyway, yeah, the general point is the same, meaning they've got less YD. So YD is very good disposable income hence they are purchasing fewer goods and then that way hopefully you might see a reduction in inflation and that really is all there is to it ladies and gentlemen demand pull inflation is caused by too much demand how do you bring it under control use the interest rate how could you use the interest rate put the interest rate up and then you just need to know a couple of the kind of the, the mechanics behind why that would bring aggregate demand down. Is that okay? Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that I hope you're following this at home, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this is all uh, working. <laughs> just double check. Seems to be okay. So now I'm just going to stop this, ladies and gentlemen. I'll come back to you. Um, moment